You're watching Reason and Theology Live, a show dedicated to charitable discussions, debates, interviews, commentary, and analysis. The show concentrates on theological topics, historical matters, and philosophical problems with content ranging from introductory material to in-depth examinations. And now, your host, Michael Lofton. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reason and Theology. Your host Michael Lofton on a Thursday afternoon, joined by another YouTuber here, Jose Placencia from the channel La Fe de la Iglesia. It's a Spanish apologetics channel. Welcome to the show, Jose. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Uh, thanks for having me. And I'm just, you know, hoping to do a, a good a good job with the translation uh needs <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you will and i was looking at the channel it looks really really professional by the way i put a link to it there in the show notes so y'all go and check it out hit the subscribe button so tell me first a little bit about yourself before we dive into the videos that we're going to review one of the these videos is a bishop who's being denied access to his church and he's a bishop a catholic bishop in nicaragua and then we also have a priest who's also being denied but first tell me a little bit about yourself before we talk about the video specifically Okay, so I grew up as a cradle Catholic. Uh, I received all the initiation sacraments, baptism, uh, my first communion, confirmation. Mm -hmm. And then during my teen years, uh, things, uh, things fell apart. Uh, I became a rebellious teenager, mm -hmm. just doing my own thing. And so I, I would say that my formation as a Catholic was not uh, the strongest one. Yeah. And to make uh, to make a short, long uh, story short, I became uh, a Protestant. I became mm -hmm. a Baptist, mm -hmm. and it was a good experience in the sense that uh, they were a very a very nice community, very friendly. Uh, by the way, I became a Baptist through one of my best friends. Oh. So they treated me very nice. Very mm -hmm. uh, everything was was great, community wise. Sure and fellowship uh, wise. But um, yeah, I didn't know much about the Catholic faith. I didn't know the differences, but I just decided to stay as a Baptist, which I did for 20, 20 years. Eventually I became, uh, you know, I was helping like uh, everywhere, like cleaning, taking care of the, the, the maintenance of the building. And then I was an aide for one of the teens uh teachers on sunday school class mm. then eventually little by little uh, i'm just going through the years i i was preaching here and there um eventually i became an assistant of the pastor and then uh eventually i'm i'm just jumping uh many years yeah, <laughs> i yeah. was a uh, <laughs> i was a missionary and um so when i was uh at southern baptist uh, theological seminary in louisville kentucky uh, I was already uh, studying Catholicism, mm -hmm. but not because I wanted to convert. I wanted to be ready to totally des destroy Catholicism. <laughs> right. Yeah. And in the process of doing so, I, I just realized that as much as I love to be Protestant and I wanted to continue being a, a Protestant, I couldn't. In yeah. good conscience, I just couldn't continue being a Protestant and eventually... I, um, even though, as I said, I grew up as a cradle Catholic, mm -hmm. for me it truly was a conversion of mind, heart, uh, because at that point I really had a very Protestant soul. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I, I counted as a conversion, even though technically I know it's more like a reversion. Reversion. Yeah. <laughs> but in 2016 in Louisville, Kentucky, I, I quit my seminary at southern baptist to become a catholic and um since then little by little i've been trying to do some apologetics and as as you said i do have a channel uh in english would translate as the faith of the church mm -hmm. the faith of the church um uh, and um so that's that's what i'm doing um well there's many things i could say but for the sake of time i'll leave it there <laughs> 
That's awesome. And, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say that they started looking into Catholicism to refute it and end up becoming Catholics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I just didn't know where I was getting into. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's true for all of us who started to look into Catholicism. So, all right, well, let's let's talk about this first video. Let me pull it up on my screen, enable audio, and let's talk about this. Um, do you have any information about this bishop? I saw this video, eh, it was maybe three weeks or so ago, uh, started going viral on Facebook, but I, you know, obviously I don't know Spanish, so I didn't really know a whole lot that was going on. I asked my wife about it and she said, oh, well, you know, he wasn't being allowed into the church or something to that effect, but I haven't really been able to look further into it. Do you have any information about what's going on here? Yeah, well, as far as the, the bishop uh, himself, I don't have information as far as his uh, personal background. I mean, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, his career mm -hmm. in, in the church as a prelate. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the same, uh, as you just said, I mm -hmm. also got the news about the situation in Nicaragua. Uh, I know he was not being allowed to get into the church. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, he just decided to uh, kneel. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know all the details. Um, Mm. I've been trying to keep up. Um, I have some friends in Nicaragua um, and, you know, they share some pieces of information. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, you know, at this point, as pretty much everybody knows, they are just trying to uh, repress altogether uh, the Catholic Church. It seems like that's the actual goal. Do we know his name by any chance? I'm trying to look through. Yeah. Well, let um, me see here real quick. Arch... Bishop of Matagalepa, I guess is what it says in Spanish in Let's the description. See. Um let me I'll share my screen. Um yeah. uh, well, well some... according to the information I just found, his name <laughs> is Rolando. Rolando Alvarez. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And he's the bishop of let me see. I want to get the uh, pronunciation right. Um, yeah, Ma Mata Galpa, Mata Galpa, Mata Galpa. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so the, the bishop's of, name is Rolando, Rolando Alvarez. In the north of Nicaragua, I guess is what it says here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I've seen multiple videos of, of him, by the way. So it seems like this is kind of an ongoing thing. Um, so what, what's going on with the government in, in Nicaragua that you have prelates not being allowed into their churches? Any, any information there? Well, uh, it seems like, you know, um, as you might imagine, is related with the communist uh, influence of the government. The government. Uh, I found an article uh, here about the situation. It says Nicaraguan police on Friday raided the residence of Roman Catholic bishop. Uh, critical, uh, apparently he was being critical of the communist government. Okay. It says critical of President uh, Daniel Ortega's administration, detaining him and several other priests. So it was not just the bishop, but some other priests in a dramatic escalation of tensions between the church and a government increasingly intolerant of uh, the Catholic Church. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of the background. Um, let's, uh, let me share the video and let's, let's watch it together here. Maybe if you could do yeah. some translation for us, if, if there is, uh, is any needed, let's, let's start it now. Let me know, by the way, if you can't hear the audio when I start it. Después de 16 días de cerco policial, las fuerzas de seguridad irrumpieron en las instalaciones de la Curia Arzobispal de Matagalpa, en el norte de Nicaragua. All right, so I'll stop there if you could just briefly translate that. Uh, maybe yeah, it seems summary, like, you know. It, it seems like uh, before they actually arrested the bishop, uh, they were uh, they were being um, for 16 days. So for 16 days, they were like, it seems like for 16 days they were not uh, allowing the bishop to perform wow. yeah, his uh, functions as, as a bishop. And I think that will entail the actual worship. Uh, mm -hmm. So for 16 days and after that, they decided to just uh, get, get inside of the mm -hmm. building and make the arrest. 
Oh, wow. So they went ahead and arrested him. Okay, let, let's continue with the video. Para arrestar al obispo Rolando Álvarez, así como a cuatro sacerdotes y tres laicos que acompañaban al religioso. All right, so what, what was the summary there? Once they, uh, once they got in, they arrested the bishop, four mm -hmm. priests, and three laymen. Oh, wow. So they're, they're arresting even some of the laity. Okay, all right. La madrugada de hoy, viernes 19 de agosto, se realizó en las instalaciones de la Casa Curia de la ciudad de Matagalpa, un operativo que permitió recuperar la normalidad para la ciudadanía y las familias matagalpinas. All right, so not, yeah, um, synopsis maybe of that part for us. Yeah, and it seems like um, it seems like the the people reporting on this particular um, channel, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like probably they had the government government's version. <laughs> okay, <because> yeah. <laughs> they picture they picture the 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 policeman as rescuing the community uh. from the <laughs> <laughs> yeah from the tensions caused by this quote unquote evil uh, bishop and, and priest, I guess. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> no no bias there. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, let's continue. La institución informó que trasladaron al obispo de Matagalpa a la capital Managua para dejarlo bajo resguardo domiciliar. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, he was immediately uh, moved from Matagalpa in mm -hmm. North uh, Nicaragua to. Um, to the uh the capital city i totally uh i missed the, the name of the and i should know the the capital of Nicar managua managua so he was moved from matagalpa in northern uh nicaragua to uh managua to the capital city uh and he is not in jail or prison he is uh under um he's being uh um He's at home, so they mm -hmm. assign a residence for mm -hmm. the bishop, but mm -hmm. he's been um, he's been uh, just monitored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I think there that means there are a couple of agents, um, mm -hmm. yeah, taking care of him. Um, I well, I don't know if I should wow. say taking care of right, him. Right, right, but just, you know, <laughs> monitoring him. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Mientras que las otras siete personas fueron trasladadas a la prisión con... Well, I recognize the alto sign. I'm recently driving in Costa Rica. That's about the only thing I recognize here. Resguardo domiciliar. Mientras que las otras siete personas fueron trasladadas a la prisión conocida como el Chipote. Por ejemplo... Mm, yeah. Yeah, so he's home... Some, I guess, I don't know if I can say homebound, the bishop... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other people, uh, I guess that means the priest and, and the laymen, mm -hmm. they went to, I think uh, they didn't clarify it, but it sounds like they went to some sort of uh, um, jail. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Siete personas fueron trasladadas a la prisión conocida como el Chipote. Por ejemplo, oh, yeah. Monsignor Orlando Álvarez lo han tildado de político disfrazado de, con sotana. So this was the bishop of one of the bishops in Costa Rica. Yes, yeah, he's uh, Monsignor um, Manuel Salazar, uh, bishop uh, in Costa Rica, and he's saying that the bishop of uh, Matagalpa in Nicaragua is being portrayed as a political, um, um, as a political, I guess, protester against uh, against mm -hmm. the president. Uh, by the way, they did mention that the priests and the laymen, mm -hmm. when uh, they were sent to prison, so they are on a actual prison. The only one that is not in prison would be the bishop of Matagalpa in Nicaragua. Wow. Um, and where is he? What what part of Costa Rica is he a bishop of? I'm trying to see. It doesn't. Here. It doesn't specify, yeah, it doesn't specify there. I'm I would say see. San Jose, which is the capital city of costa rica mm -hmm. uh I, I, of course i could be wrong but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh usually the bishop of san jose is the one that would take the lead in these kind of uh oh, okay that communications yeah right right that makes sense okay all right uh let's, let's continue here politico disfrazado con sotana las conferencias episcopales de américa latina y el caribe han rechazado las acciones contra el obispo álvarez la iglesia es perseguida porque 
dice el Papa Francisco, la verdad siempre es perseguida. Yeah. Yeah, they mentioned that the um, uh, conferences of bishops in the mm -hmm. Caribbean, and I think they said Central America, they have denounced uh, what has happened with the bishop. And also uh, Monsignor just said that, as Pope Francis says, uh, truth will always, always uh, be persecuted. Mm, mm. El secretario general de la OEA y el máximo representante de las Naciones Unidas mostraron su preocupación ante la acción gubernamental. En los últimos cuatro años, el presidente Daniel Ortega ha acusado a los obispos de conspirar junto a Estados Unidos y la oposición para asestar un golpe de Estado contra su administración. Uh, they mentioned that the Secretary of the United Nations um, showed uh, his concern about the political situation in Nicaragua. Okay. Yeah. Donaldo Hernández, Voz de América. I, I guess that was just who, who was reporting. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Wow. That's, um, that's interesting. Like I said, I've seen multiple videos with, with him being denied access to his church i didn't know he was he was actually arrested he and it sounds like you said four other priests and some laity yes four priests and three laymen and i think the, the 16 days prior to the arrest mm -hmm. that's when he was kneeling outside and i think at one point if i recall well he even have a demonstrance with the most holy sacrament he was in in, in adoration Um, if I recall well, I think I saw a video where he's uh, uh, in the presence of uh, Jesus Christ in, in the Most Holy Sacrament. The, this is crazy. I mean, is there any idea on how, how this thing is going to end up? So he's just not going to be allowed into his cathedral and he's just going to hang out at the house? And I mean, how long is that going to work out, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a political situation. I mean meaning the government uh, is, um, is, a, is a situation with the, the, the type of government in, in Nicaragua. I, usually those things, the way are dealt with is uh, diplomatic uh, when they come to the table and they, uh, they come to an agreement. Um, when things don't work uh, in the diplomatic way, uh, things can get... Uh, can get uh, worse. Yeah. Let me show another video here. If you could translate this one for me. I watched it, but of course I'm going to need some assistance here. So this is also another priest in Nicaragua who evidently is also not being allowed to enter into his church to say mass. So let, let's watch it together. Um, well, hold on, wait. Uh, I think I may have had it muted. Let me rewind that. Can you hear that? Yes. What is he saying uh, so far? Yeah, the, the priest is inviting the people to come to the house of the Lord uh, mm -hmm. to offer a mass uh, thanks, uh, 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 thanksgiving. He mentioned the word thanksgiving. Let's thank the Lord and come, come. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, you know, as you can see, the officer yeah. officers are denying access. All right, okay. Oh. All right, what, what's he saying here? Because this translation does it look like it's really accurate. Um, <laughs> it looks like it's Google Translate. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. Mm, so, uh, father, father told the officers, "What you guys are doing is is, is delinquent. You guys right. are act, acting as delinquents. Right. This is not the right thing to do. You guys are not uh, fulfilling your duty 
Um, then the lady before that, she mentioned, this is the house of the Lord. You guys have no authority. Is Father the one who has the authority in this place? Yeah, and I, could you imagine, I mean, I guess being a police officer in this context, I mean, you're told to go and bar this priest from entering into the, what you know, I how, how could one in good conscience do that? You know, what, what are you supposed to do? However, the resign, it's it, it puts them in a difficult situation, but I think that at the end of the day, yeah, you, you probably have to resign. But does that mean that you might go to jail if you do that? If you don't comply with what the government is telling you to do, you might go to jail? I imagine they're in a difficult situation here. I'm not excusing them by any means. I, I'm just trying to think if I were a Catholic and I were a police officer and I'm being told that you have to bar this priest, that, that's going to be a rough one because I, I guess if if you don't listen, you're going to go to jail. But, you know, sometimes that that that's what it is. I mean, you just need to go to jail at that point. Yeah. Uh, just uh, if if they are willing uh, to uh, to repress yeah. these uh the Catholic Church, yeah. Uh, in spite of all the good things they have done, yeah. Uh, if that can happen to the Catholic Church, so to speak, yeah, uh, yeah, we, we just can't. We, we just can't imagine what can happen to those officers. Oh yeah, they... <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. But but sometimes that's what we're called to do. You know. Yes. I I couldn't in good conscience tell the priest, no, you can't enter here. I would either resign, and if the consequences are that, you know. I go to jail. It, it is what it is, and I'm gonna have to go to jail. Also, I've heard, um, and I don't know to what extent this can um, can be um, a factor, but I've heard that in in the last 50 years, uh, the Nicaraguan uh, society has been um, split because of the incursion of the the neo neo evangelical groups. Mm -hmm. So somebody told me that right now they have gotten to a point where it's almost like half and half of the country. Mm -hmm. You have Protestant and, and Catholic, and mm -hmm. that's, that has also um, affected uh, the re relations in, in the country. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so what were they saying there? Something about a dictator? Yeah, father uh, Father said that this is a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. he, he just plainly s said it. This is a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And the ladies, they're just saying, we just want to be in mass. We want to give thanks to God. Mm -hmm. Like they are like perplexed. It, it's you can tell they are very per, uh, perplexed mm -hmm. because um, what they are saying is just they they are not making like a huge argument. They are just saying mm -hmm. uh, we just want to go in and and mm -hmm. and be in mass and and give thanks to God. What's going on? You can tell they are very very perplexed. Okay. So somebody in the background saying something and then father starts speaking. Yes, I was trying to discern mm -hmm. what the person uh, on the background saying. Mm -hmm. I think I I uh, I heard the word um thief. Okay. I don't know if that was in reference to uh Maybe not. I was uh, I was gonna say yeah. I don't know if that was in reference to the president mm -hmm. or or the priest, but but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what did Father say there? Mm, well, it was not understandable what he yeah. said. Okay. That's a lot of police officers just for a few people they are trying to go to the liturgy. That's incredible. I mean, I'm just thinking, wow, a lot of resources to really lock out some Catholics here. Okay. At, at this point, so what Father is doing, he's uh, talking not anymore to the officers, but he's talking to the people, to his people. 
-hmm. And he's saying, uh, this is a religious persecution. We're being denied access to the sacraments, uh, to the Eucharist, the body of Christ. It seems like he's trying to, uh, because as, as I said, the, the, the ladies, the people, mm -hmm. they don't know what's going on. And, and I mean it. I mean, they know this is repression, and mm -hmm. but they don't understand what what is it that is behind what's going on. And Father is like trying to explain to them what, yeah, what the situation is. He's saying this is a religious persecution. Mm -hmm. You guys are being denied access to the sacraments and to the Eucharist. Wow. <laughs> que hoy en día es una constitución que está amañada es una misa la que vamos a celebrar a esta hora 3 de la tarde que se sepa el mundo que se está negando celebrar una eucaristía um, let the world know that uh, Nicaraguans are being denied to partake of the, the Eucharist wow no tenemos derecho Hacer el culto en Nicaragua. Aquí está, lo puede ver el mundo entero. Se nos niega el derecho a una Eucaristía. We're being denied uh, of our rights. Uh, we do have a right to uh, worship God, to partake of the sacraments, and mm -hmm. we're being denied. Um, yeah, so he's like teaching people that their rights are being violated. Okay. Así que ante los medios de comunicación, ante el mundo, exijo, exijo que estos fieles ingresen al templo de San, de San Miguel en Masaya para que se le la misa. It seems like the person in the background, I, I'm not sure, but it seems like the person is yelling, a father, he's saying that you're, you, uh, you're uh, engaging in politics. Okay. So it seems like, yeah, it seems like the government is being repressive and, you know, priests are starting to, to talk about it mm -hmm. and people just don't like that. They yeah. want just the Catholic Church to remain totally silent. Yeah. And accusing him of, you know, just engaging in a political stunt here. Hmm. <laughs> Did you make out what he was saying there? Yes, he's he's saying that he's willing he's willing to suffer. He's willing to, if you he's saying if you guys want to beat me, if you guys want to do anything to me, it doesn't really matter. I am willing to uh, I'm willing to do everything. He's saying I'm not going anywhere. Mm. Um, and here I am. He, here I stand. Uh, do we know the name of this priest by any chance? Uh, I didn't catch it. Yeah. Let's see if we can maybe find out here in a minute. Commissioner Barrante, what is the order, Commissioner? No one will raise the hand to these official officials. Oh, that was interesting. Uh, Father is saying uh, he's instructing the people don't. Don't do anything to the, uh, to these officers. Mm -hmm. Don't don't do anything. Don't touch them. Don't mm -hmm. fight with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Comisionado, no se le va a permitir a los feligreses entrar a la iglesia. Okay, so at that point, Father wanted to, he was like getting ready to go, just go in. Mm -hmm. And it seems like some some of the faithful are trying to persuade Father to just let it go. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like Father, Father is like willing to go in no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I heard a couple of ladies saying, no, don't, Father, don't do mm -hmm. it, Father. It's not worth it. This, we are, we are aware of what's going on here. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the situation. Mm -hmm. 
Could you make that out? Yeah. So it seems like the lady's persuaded father not to not to go in, mm -hmm. um, and his it seems like father uh, pretty much considered he's like, okay, let's just pray here outside. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Let's pray so we can have access to the Eucharist. Yeah, I, w I wonder if they're gonna have to start saying liturgy in house churches and stuff like that at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if that's already taking place. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that would that would be ne necessary for you know the bishop to just say, look, go ahead and you know for instruct his priest to just go ahead and start saying liturgies, you know, in, in different homes and things like that. Yeah, but not So I know that's the Hail Mary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I can make that out. <laughs> and you know, uh, it seems like there, uh, now everything's matching. Remember the guy in the background, like mm -hmm. yelling? Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like they are like laymen, uh, but they are not Catholic mm -hmm. because something was going, I don't know if you saw it, something was going on. And mm -hmm. I heard a lady saying, uh, don't let them uh, provoke you. Mm -hmm. Don't don't let them provoke you. So it seems mm -hmm. like I don't know they they were sent. I don't know the details, but there's some mm -hmm. laymen trying to provoke the yeah, the trying people. to stir it up. Right, that that would make sense. Okay. <laughs> por la democracia que desea este pueblo, por su libertad. Te pedimos que tenga misericordia de todos nosotros, misericordia de toda esta gente, Señor, de todas estas personas que mal gobiernan a este país, que somos víctimas de una dictadura. Un Señor que desatas, un Señor que desatas. Can you make out any of that? Yes, well, Father, Father's brain, He's asking God for all the people that are participating in this uh, persecution. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, praying for the authorities. Um, and almost at the end, there was a guy like screaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can tell that person is anti-Catholic okay. uh, because he said um, the Catholic Church is the wars something along the lines of the worst abuser in the world okay gotcha. very anti-catholic right 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 sure we know that evil cannot prevail against against good. I heard uh, <laughs> uh, Saint Michael in there. <laughs> yeah, I got that part. Yeah, <laughs> he is. Uh, he's using the Cristero, yeah, the yeah. long live to Christ yeah. the King, Christ long the King, live right. to Nicaragua, uh -huh. uh, and then he he asks the faithful, "What is it that causes uh, a great joy?" And people mm -hmm. respond, "The Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary." Mm -hmm. And then he said again, "Long live to Christ the King." Wow. Um, like I said, I want to see if we can maybe find out uh, who, who this is. Um, trying to see here in the description. It's not really 
giving anything specific from what I can tell. Um, I guess this is just the person who posted it. This is not actually um, the name of the priest. So yeah, it, do it doesn't look like they give any more specifics here, unfortunately. I don't know if anybody in the chat is able to identify who the priest is or where, where this is specifically, but it would be good to have some names and locations and stuff like that and people that we can know to specifically pray for and things along those lines. But it, it just really seems like this stuff keeps popping up now on Facebook. Like it's it's really ramping up. That's the impression that I'm getting. Yes, and you know, hopefully things don't get worse but if things continue the way they are, perhaps um, um, if if you think fit, uh, I have um, some people that can provide for me uh, some um, first first hand first hand information. Uh, eventually, if that's if that's the best, uh, we can actually. I'm I'm up for it. Uh, let's do it. Any any kind of information that you can get to follow up on this to kind of keep us up to date that'd be helpful because I I don't know anybody talking about this. I haven't seen anybody address this. But then again, I don't know everything that's out there, right? So it it could be that people are talking <laughs> about this. It's just I haven't come across it. All I have come across are some of these clips on Facebook showing this, but it's all in Spanish. I have no idea what's really going on. It's obvious that people are being denied access to the sacraments, but beyond that, I don't really know. Also, I personally, I personally think that one of the reasons you, <laughs> it hasn't come across your radar, it has yeah. to be with the algorithms. That that's probably it. Yeah. And so I, I imagine there's other people that um, maybe you, YouTube is kind of you know putting that in their feed and stuff like that but i guess just in in the circles that i run in we don't hear a whole lot about this yeah <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's a problem with the circles that i run in maybe, maybe but, we need to change that off a little bit <laughs> but, but you know it used to be back in the day that even if you were not um watching a lot of news it used to be that when something big was taking place mm -hmm. that they would tell the world hey guys something's wrong Something wrong. Something's uh, something wrong's happening, but now it depends. It depends of uh, if that news favors which which ideology. I guess that's point well made. Like I said, though, if you if you can get us some more information, let's maybe come and do a part two. If you also come across more videos that we can um, review and just you know keep us more up to date on the situation, that'd be awesome. It seems like someone's providing some information about the father in the chat. Yeah, go ahead and, and translate that for us. Uh, yeah, there's an, an Enrique. Mm -hmm. He's saying that, um, okay, it seems like uh, the name of the father is Edwin Roman, Edwin Roman uh, Calderon, and he's the, he's the pastor of St. Michael Archangel uh, in Messiah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. that yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Mm. Um says i think that's him i saw it on the vatican website okay so there's an article in the vatican news website good to know i did not know about that um okay it, it, it seems like this father is mm -hmm. one of one of the most vocal okay uh, and that's that maybe that's why a lot mm -hmm. of people were yelling at him i mean like screaming at him saying that you are engaging in politics mm -hmm. But of course, we know that he's just doing the right thing, but he's been mm -hmm. as a political... Portrayed as just stirring things up and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is it is it really he who's stirring things up or is he just responding to the situation? You know, um, I, I would think whoever's denying one access to the sacraments is who's really stirring it up. So Yeah, that tells you. <laughs> That tells you a lot, definitely. Yeah, pr propaganda, you know, that, that's yeah. the way things go. <laughs> I see somebody's giving a shout out to your channel here, El Jefe, uh, in the chat. <laughs> the, the boss, I think that's what that means, right? The boss. Yeah, yeah the boss, yeah. <laughs> or, or the chief. The chief, okay, the that's chief. awesome. <laughs> it's a good name there. <laughs> Well, look, thank you so much, Jose, for coming on. Um, put put in a plug, like I said, for your channel or anything else you want to make us aware of. Well, um, I do have a channel in English. Uh, it's been a while since I uh, I used it. Uh, so I just have my testimony 
my wife's testimony mm -hmm. and I have a I have a video entitled why would a vibrant Protestant become a Catholic and that's in the faith of the church the faith of the church I just have three videos it's been like a year since last time I uploaded any content but I do plan to go back to it and start uploading content. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, um, I already extended an invitation to Mr. Michael Lofton. He has <laughs> <Yeah>. accepted. <laughs> we just need to uh, come to uh, an agreement as far as yeah. the date and the time. Yeah, yeah But well, yeah. I guess I already made it public. Uh, <laughs> Michael Lofton will be in the faith of the church. Yeah. Channel. <laughs> yeah. Happy, happy to come on and talk about whatever, whatever you want. And, um, uh, yeah, and and so what what kind of content do you provide on the Spanish channel? Uh, okay, so it is apologetics, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Uh, that's the main uh, focus. Apologetics. Mm -hmm. I do have a lot, um, a lot of uh, conversion testimonies. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of my videos are apologetics per se and conversion testimonies, but I also do a lot of teaching. Mm -hmm. um uh, uh, lately we we have been working on a series uh about the church fathers okay um we just uh the titles are like what did the first christians believe about mm -hmm. the eucharist about mm -hmm. hell about uh the uh, the the sacrifice of the mass oh, and things like that. that about the virgin mary so mm -hmm. we, we we've been working on uh, a little bit on, on the church fathers um, but yeah, so apologetics, conversion stories, and Catholic uh, teaching. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, like I said, everybody go and check it out. I got a link there in the description. Um, uh, I see here, pray for the church in Nicaragua uh, from Dylan. So yeah, absolutely, everybody. Uh, keep our persecuted brethren here in mind, and uh, let's pray for them. Uh, but any anything else you wanted to add to that before we, uh, before we kill the stream here in just a second? Um, no, that's that's pretty much it. I just want to say thank you, Michael, for the invitation. I I, I just hope I did a, a good, a decent oh, job this, with this those translations. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was very helpful. I think we caught the essence of what, what's going on here. So, once again, thanks so much for coming on and and doing this. And I look forward to perhaps a part two. Thank you. God bless you all. And everybody, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Lastly, check me out patreon.com forward slash reason of theology. You'll, uh, of course, support me here with the channel and also get access to extra content. See you later. God bless. Oh, wait, before you go, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel. This is my primary means to provide for my family, and it also helps me to produce content like this video. If you would like to support me, become a patron by visiting patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. You'll also get access to extra exclusive content when you become a patron. Lastly, hit that like button and the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment down below. God bless.